have everyone here. Um, the first uh, item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. Um, they look good. We just need a motion to approve. So moved. Peter, I second. thank you. Thanks, Denise, for the second. Um, <coughs> well, next up is uh, recognition of two employees who have dedicated 20 years each to the organization. So I'd like to roll them forward. Sorry, Sorry. 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 first. Yep. All right, so we're starting <coughs> with April O'Brien today, who's celebrating 20 years of service at CDTA, and she is currently our paratransit support specialist, so she works in our um, start part now. So April previously worked for social services and happened to meet Johan Gandia, who is a CDTA travel trainer, and Joe told April about CDTA, but April was working towards nursing school at the time. So a few years had passed in nursing school, and she bumped into Joe again, who encouraged April to apply at CDTA. She joined us in 2003 as a part-time star operator on the weekends. So she wanted to be the best candidate when a full-time position opened, so she helped around the office with computer work and was always ready to support the dispatch team. April has held several roles, mostly in STAR, over the years. She's always ready to pitch in and get the job done whenever needed, and she even drove fixed route service in Troy on routes 22, 86, and 370, and also the RPI shuttle. She said she loved doing the student trips. So about five years ago, she joined the authority staff and is the paratransit support specialist. So what that means is that she helps to make sure the computer systems and people who use them speak the same language, essentially. The technology has improved the way we work in STAR, and she's proud that CDTA takes an innovative approach to the work that we do. April's positive attitude and good work ethic make her work enjoyable, and even when her STAR bus had a small fire years ago, which I'm surprised that we put that in there. <laughs> she handled it with patience and ensured the safety of her customers, so a story that she says she can now somewhat laugh about today. In her spare time, she enjoys gardening, traveling in her RV, especially to Cape Cod, and most recently, she has become a motor chick, so you may spot her three-wheeled spider motorcycle uh, outside yeah. here. Uh, we asked April about retirement, and she said it's not really on the horizon at this time because she enjoys being here with her family, uh, CDTA family, and still has a few years to go, but congratulations, April, in 20 years. Yeah. Hey, I told April that was just smoke. <laughs> so far, <the> smoke. <laughs> right, Dave? Right. <laughs> um, well, next up is Dave Gears, who is our street amenities <laughs> Dave is also celebrating 20 years of service with CDTA. So Dave grew up in Edwardsville, Illinois, and has lived on both coasts, holding many jobs from carpentry to technology, landscaper to planning, and geographic information systems. After completing his degree at SUNY Albany, Dave interned at the Department of Health and the Capital District Regional Planning Commission, doing planning and mapping assignments. And a few years later, a position at CDT <coughs> opened, and he was hired. Dave's first job at CDTA was a data analyst, and for six years he supplied information to the National Transit Database, which forms the basis for more, most of our funding. Dave wanted to get more involved in the operation as a whole and noticed a need for oversight of our street amenities program. Based on that work, he was hired as our street amenities manager. So this role oversees about 2,800 bus stops, 368 bus shelters and stations, and all of the benches, trash receptacles, park and ride lots in our five county service area, soon to be six. His favorite part of the job is working with the community and seeing the impact CDTA's development has on the pedestrian experience. Simple sidewalk curb cuts make a big difference getting people where they need to go, and he's proud to have been with us for 20 years because of the continued efforts we make to building our community. He says it keeps things exciting. One of Dave's favorite memories was the first bus rodeo he attended. It was impressive, he says, watching bus operators navigate the course with such precision. 
In his spare time, he's busy gardening and landscaping, entertaining his two dogs and traveling with his wife, Katie. Dave also enjoys playing the guitar and hiking. Time will tell, he says, when he will feel like retiring, but he says he's got a few more years in him here at CDTA, and for that, we are grateful. Congratulations. <laughs> So uh, these two are uh, both management employees. You see a lot of uh, our 18 brothers and sisters. Uh, it's unusual to just have two management people, but I know the story, their personal stories pretty well. I watched April, you know, basically bounce all over Star, but always on a uh, upward trajectory uh, and making, I think, the service and, and the unit better all the time. And, you know, Dave's history is really interesting because um, I remember saying, what the heck do we need a, you know, amenities manager for? Um, but he proved that, you know, with oversight, you can make things a lot better. And, you know, right now our network of amenities is growing all the time. And, frankly, I'm not quite sure we can do BRT without street amenities manager. So, Dave, thanks for the work you do. Uh -oh. Somebody pass yeah. us a note. Yes. Dan Lynch. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if you're ready. Yeah. Sure. Do it from the table. Or from <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is uh, this is me wearing my official cap as deputy county executive. Um, and what we have here to present the CDTA is a special recognition proclamation. This comes from an event that NYSIT had at the Albany Capital Center. Uh, where there was contracted transportation uh, scheduled to uh, be a part of the transportation to and from the, the event, uh, a couple day event at, at, at the uh, Capital Center. Unfortunately, uh, that company didn't fulfill their obligation under said contract and we had a pinch. And like most things that I've experienced over the last year as a board member, CDTA answered the call. And uh, this is a special recognition and proclamation from the county executive uh, for so-called saving the day for that convention. So I want to uh, ask yeah. you to yeah. I was trying to figure out. We're going to do one more with them. Yeah. Yeah. Devin J. You guys can attest to that. Yes, we can. Thank you. Thanks, Thank Carl. Thank you. Sends her best. So, the backstory. <laughs> um, Friday, it was a Friday, I don't know, afternoon or late in the afternoon. Um, I get wind of something going on and Jeez, I don't know if we can do that. Like, yeah, we're, we're, my first report's never right. I need 15 buses and we need them now. <laughs> no way, right? I called Lance. I said, what do you know about this? And, well, I'm trying to piece some things together and save the day. I, I don't know. That might be too strong a word. But we basically threw whatever we had uh, into downtown Albany and said, you know, follow the instructions. I don't know if my friends from the Visitors Bureau, they still call it. Discover, Discover Albany. Uh, I, I think they were probably, you know, making sure we didn't screw everything up. We, we moved several thousand people in a couple wow. of hours, which is what we do. Um, Dan and I talk a lot about this kind of stuff. I mean, Monday, he, he calls me and said, hey, you had a trolley in the Memorial Day Parade. And I said, oh, no, he's going to tell me it was dirty or something like that. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, we had a Gold Star mom leave, leave her cell phone on, on the... Um, on the trolley, I said, you know, we'll take care of it, don't worry about it. You know, called, actually called Steve Waxman and said, hey, can, can we find it? It's, I don't know, in an hour we found it. Dan, you know, typical Dan Lynch, sorry to bother you. It's no, no bother, that's what we do. It happens all the time. Lots so, of bikes yeah. out back yeah. if you no, want. No, it, it's, <laughs> it's just, uh, you know, and, and, and for all the folks in the room, you're, you're part of something special, and, and uh, it's the willingness to, to help when needed. 
And uh, that means a lot because yeah. every time you pick up the phone call or shoot an email or text, it doesn't mean that there's a, a happy person on the other end that wants to, to help. But this organization does. And, and you know, the, the issue at NYSET is just a, another example of, of going above and beyond uh, the, the call. So you've got a lot to be proud of. Yeah. Thank you. It's a million dollar client for just Albany County. Yeah. Uh, they're going to New York City next year, but they're looking to come back in 25 and 26. A million dollar client, if we lose that, but, you know, those aren't just lying around. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Very good. Um, and once again, congratulations to April and Dave on your 20 years of service uh, to the organization. We certainly appreciate it and glad to, glad to hear that no future retirements are in the future. So meet every employee we can get. So, all right. So we'll move on to the uh, committee reports and I'll do the board operations uh, committee report on behalf of Jamie. Uh, the committee met Wednesday, May 17th, here at 110 Waterville Ave and via Microsoft Teams. Uh, we were joined by John McDonald and Mark, e Mark Egan, who joined us to talk about a community outreach uh, request. Lisa Morello provided us a recap on the state budget and advocacy season. An increase in STOA of 14.6% was confirmed in the state budget. This is an excellent result for us, and we thank the governor, legislature, and our local delegation for their support. We are advocating for a couple of, of end of session bills. Uh, one will make it easier for nonprofit operators to acquire car sharing insurance like Drive, and one to amend the public authorities law to include Warren County as a member of the district. Hopefully, that will be. Uh, you know, so uh, we reviewed the agendas and activities for the main meetings. Uh, we did discuss we needed to fill the vacant secretary role since Joe Sperano's resignation. Jamie reached out to Georgie Nugent, who agreed to do this. So at this time, I just need just a quick vote of all of those in favor of Georgie as secretary for the fiscal year 2023 to 2024. Please say aye. 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 That's uh, approved unanimously. Thank you, Georgie, for, uh, for your service and commitment. We know your schedule's busy, and we appreciate you stepping in. Uh, yeah. the, uh, the summer meeting schedule was reviewed. The board will take July and August off, subject to the call of the chair. In September, we will pull the meetings forward one week with the board meeting to be held on September 20th. And there's a schedule of the committee meetings for September in our packets. Uh, the next meeting of the committee is Wednesday, June 14th, 2023, 9.15 a.m. here at 110 Waterville Ave via Microsoft Teams. So that concludes my report, unless there's any other comments or questions. Just wanted to point out that uh, state operating assistance has gone up 50% the last five years. So, you know, sometimes you wonder what all that work is all about, and meetings, and, and it's, it's been a great result. Do you um, anticipate that commitment will be sustained, or at least we've got out in the hump right now? No. Well, the one thing we didn't achieve over the last five years, and it's big loss and Bill, Bill Carpenter actually going to his retirement party tomorrow. Uh, Louis headed NIPTA for the last several years. Uh, he and I fought like heck to, to get new funding sources into the upstate uh, account. We were not able to get any of that done. So I think the answer is not likely. I don't know how we could sustain that level of growth. So happy days are not on the corner in that regard. But it's happy right now. Yeah, but it's the baseline number. Yeah. Yes. So next up, we have uh, Denise is going to provide the performance monitor monitoring and audit committee report. Denise. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the committee met last week um, here 
at 110 Board of Fleet Avenue and um, on Microsoft Teams. The first uh, item we had is uh, the audit committee report um, and seeking approval of the fiscal year 2023 audit draft. Seth Hennard and Liz Krause from Lumsden and McCormick presented the draft fiscal year 2023 year end audit. We received a clean opinion with no findings or weaknesses. Lumsden reviewed their process and approach along with required communications and the balance sheet. The audit presentation is included in your packets. Um, I believe it was sent out to everybody. Um, and uh, at this time, we need a motion to approve the draft fiscal year 2023 financial mm -hmm. statements and compliance summary prepared by Lumsden and McCormick. So moved. Thanks, Dan. Yep, Peter, thank you. Um, any other comments or questions? Although, just, go, go ahead, Mark. No, go ahead. Just a, qu a quick thanks to Mike Collins, Trish Cooper. Yeah. That. Who else is here? I'm looking quick. In the whole finance team. I mean, this, this, this is, um, you know, lots of work that you don't see or hear about. Um, they do it with a smile on their face. Uh, I remember days when there weren't smiles on their faces, but Great partnership with Lumsden and McCormick. Um, it's nice to know what each other expects. Um, it, it's really a, a great partnership, I think, that uh, we have in place. Uh, and we trust them. They trust us. So all those, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The resolution is approved. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Um, so now we have six consent agenda items. Um, the first is approval of a purchase of paratransit vehicles. Uh, this is our annual order of paratransit vehicles, um, which is part of our fleet replacement program. We have a five-year contract with Shepherd Brothers to purchase <coughs> these vehicles. The staff is recommending purchase of uh, six vehicles for Star. They will have upgraded wheelchair lifts, cameras, and the new air purification system. Delivery is expected in early 2024, and we need a motion to approve the purchase of six vehicles from Shepherd Brothers Incorporated of Canandaigua, New York, for a total price of $838,440. Uh, yes, Peter. Second. Thank you. Thanks, Denise. And, um, the, these are going to replace six, and, and what, do, what do we do with the six we're replacing? Do we... Sell them, anything donate left, them, or? Anything left of them, Dave? <laughs> uh, we, we normally will offer them to other state agencies. Yeah. Uh, nobody's interested in them. We'll put them on eBay, and then yeah. if no one uh, takes them from them, then we just scrap them. Can I, I think I raised this uh, at a, at a, I forget what the, the, reason, the item was, but understanding that it goes to state agencies first, if there's not a bite at the apple, is it an opportunity to work with counties and other local municipalities for, for something like this? I mean, I, I'm, I'm just thinking, you know, there's some municipalities within the county that may want it for senior transportation or for other needs within their, their town. Yeah, city. there's there's always one-offs. Um, Stacey, what, what's the, um, there's, that's in the middle of the. Yeah, the it's kind of difficult because FTA has certain requirements. So, we can offer them to the state agencies, but it gets a little dicier if we don't then, after they're offered there, put them on public auction. Um, if after the public auction process, so we sometimes have one or two that are not remaining, there is always an option to try to work out something. It's also, um, we get a lot of requests for these vehicles, more requests than we have vehicles. So there's also a level of how do we decide who we would parse these vehicles out to as well. <clears throat> But if you know of folks that are interested, you can certainly put them in touch with us so sure. we can see yeah. if there's anything we can do for them. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, all those in favor of Resolution 18 say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The resolution is approved. Okay. Our next item is approval of the purchase of trolley vehicles. Um, we need to replace one of our one trolley vehicle. Um, we have a contract with Hometown Trolley for this. Um, and staff is recommending the purchase of one trolley 
That is the same vacant model of prior purchases. Uh, delivery is expected later this year, and uh, we need a motion to award the purchase of one trolley from Hometown Trolley of Crandon, Wisconsin, for a total price of two hundred two thousand two hundred sixty-seven dollars. Seeking a motion for resolution nineteen approval and the purchase of one replacement trolley. Peter, thank you. Second. Thanks, Dan. Any other? Where, where does that discussion? trolley go? I forgot to ask. I don't know if it has a destination. It's now part of the trolley fleet. We fleet. use trolleys in Saratoga. We use trolleys in various places down here in the lower 48. And as you know, we're getting into the, the trolley business, I guess, in the upper. In the upper 48, yeah. Okay. This is a replacement. Yeah. So all, the, all those in favor of resolution 19 approving the purchase of one replacement trolley say aye. aye aye any opposed any abstentions it's approved unanimously Thanks. okay uh, next item is approval of a, of a contract for fare boxes um, we need 22 fare boxes for our washington western brt buses this fall uh, a sole source purchase for SPX Gen Fare, fare boxes is recommended because they are proprietary. Um, they're obviously uh, what we currently use. Uh, we need a motion to award a contract to SPX Gen Fare Corporation of Elk Grove Village, Illinois, for an amount not to exceed $389,796. Seeking a motion to approve res resolution 20, approval of a sole source contract for fare boxes from SPX Gen Fair. Denise? Yeah. Yeah, second. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It is approved. Denise? All right. Uh, next item is approval of a contract for vaults. Um, the vaults at the Troy Division have reached the end of their useful life and need to be replaced. Uh, SPX Genfair vaulting hardware and software are proprietary and a sole source purchase is necessary. We need a motion to award a contract to SPX Genfair Corporation of Elk Grove Village, Illinois for an amount not to exceed $129,086. Seeking a motion to approve for resolution 21, approval of sole source contract for the purchase of vaults from SPX Genfair. Peter, thank you. Second. Denise, thank you. Any comments or questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any extensions? <coughs> Resolution 21 is approved as well. Okay, uh, next item is approval of a contract for lighting upgrade. Uh, we are installing new generation LED lighting fixtures at 110 and 85 Waterbelieve Avenue. Um, estimated energy savings is $90,000 per year. This project is sponsored by National Grid and their preferred source contractor is Integra LED. So we need a motion to award a one-year contract to Integra LED of Latham uh, for an amount not to exceed two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So moved. Thanks, Dan. Second, a second. Yes, Peter. Thank you. And from what I recall, just reason reading the resolution, this is funded by a grant. Yep. A Sam grant. Yep. When yeah. all is said and done, no out of pocket. No out of pocket cost. Yeah. yeah. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Resolution 22 is approved. Denise. Okay. Yes. Next is uh, approval of a contract for scheduling services. Um, we need a professional services firm to help us maximize our fixture and scheduling software called Hastis. Um, Horrible Scheduling has extensive HASTIS experience and provides assistance training and training to the transit industry. They have an exclusive partnership with Jiro and are the holder of sub-licensing rights for this software. Uh, we need a motion to award a two-year contract to Corval Scheduling Incorporated of Laval, Quebec. 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 
Quebec, excuse me, I'm, I know I'm mispronouncing all this, for an amount not to exceed $270,805. Seeking a motion for resolution 23 to approve a two year sole source contract for scheduling to Corvell scheduling out of Quebec. So moved. Yes. Thanks, Denise. Peter, thank you. And uh, we've been working with them a little bit. Yeah, um, this is may have looked like the most complicated award, but it's actually not. It's pretty simple. Um, <clears throat> this is really complicated software, uh, stuff that we use, a HACCIS program. And honestly, we need some outside help to, to help us better understand how to maximize uh, the potential of the software and to understand maybe some different things that we want to experiment with uh, in covering work. It's getting more and more difficult all the time. Some of, this, some of these issues actually might be resolvable some uh, through different types of scheduling processes. So we've been testing this relationship. So far, so good. Uh, staff's pretty happy. Uh, I think this might end up being one of our better investments of the year. Mm -hmm. All right, just call in the vote. All of those in favor of res resolution 23, approval of two year sole source to Corvell, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved as well, yes. Okay, um, we have uh, three administrative discussion items. The first is risk management and workers' compensation quarterly reports. Um, Amanda Avery provided a quarterly review on the risk management and workers' compensation self-insurance accounts. The committee determined that both accounts are adequate at this time. Is there any questions on that one? Okay. Then uh, moving along, uh, the monthly management report was provided by Mike Collins. Um, our MRT, uh, we're reporting taxes 21% uh, under budget to start the year, but has been trending up over the past few uh, months. Customer uh, revenue was slightly under budget at uh, minus 2.4%, but the rents at a rail station revenue outperformed budget by 19%. Wages were under budget uh, this month because of continuing headcount challenges. Workers' compensation was under budget by 29% uh, as scheduled loss of use awards are lower than anticipated. We are starting the year off in a good financial position. Are there any questions on the financial part? No? Okay, and then finally our monthly non-financial performance report. Chris Desany uh, provided that report. Fixed route ridership was up 17% this month, and star ridership was up 7% for the month. Fixed route on-time performance was at 74%, and star on-time performance was at 80%. Overall, missed trips have trended down for the past few months and are at 254. We had 21 preventable accidents this month and 20 non-preventable accidents. And if there are no questions on the non-financial management report, um, our next meeting uh, is June 21st at 110 Waterbelly Avenue in Microsoft Teams, and that will be chaired by Dan. So if I could, yes. I just want to thank uh, Denise for filling in for me. I had a late scheduling snafu, and, and uh, you stepped right in, so thank you. I didn't let you right off the hook. I thought you were uh, <laughs> <laughs> right back in. <laughs> yeah. And thank you, Denise, for your many years of chairing the committee and expertise. Um, <laughs> and, and to everybody who answered the, the call for help. Yeah. It, when, Dan, when Dan texted me, it looked like everything from there just tumbled. Every, all of a sudden, everyone had a conflict. I just called in the dogs and said, anybody who can come to the meeting, appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's great knowing that you're all there, just all a text dogs. away. Yeah. Uh, next committee report is Community and Stakeholder Relations, and Dave is going to Yes. Dave. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm sorry to not be with you in person. Uh, the committee met on, can you hear me okay? Yeah, perfect. The committee met on uh, May 25th at 1115 at 110 Waterbelieve Ave and via Microsoft Teams. Staff provided updates on the launch of a website refresh, and we also received the monthly earned media and community engagement report. 
Uh, first, John Scherzer provided an update on our website. Um, we're doing a refresh on the website. Some statistics for you on the current website. Over the last month, the most frequented pages are our schedule pages. 90% um, of the 750,000 monthly visits are made with a mobile device. So not from a desktop computer anymore. We're refreshing the look of the website with an updated look and feel. This will include updated and streamlined content and a more responsive design across multiple devices. There will be lots more drop downs for easy maneuvering with a focus on elements that are used most often. The website is expected to debut on Monday, June 12th. Any questions for John on the website refresh? All right. Next up, Jamie Caslow provided the monthly earned media and community engagement report. Last month, CDTA earned 16 media placements in television and newspaper. Stories focused on Warren County's Board of Supervisors voting in favor of merging with the authority, the return of the nature bus, Tulip Festival transportation options, and updates on CDPHP cycle seven, cycle season seven. We participated in several local events to showcase our company in the community, including the CDPHP work, Workforce Challenge, Patriot Flight Transportation for Veterans, and a Big Truck Day event in Saratoga. Jamie outlined social media engagement and provided some statistics for engagement over the last month. We saw an increase in social media engagement and followers across all social platforms. Top posts included an update on the Purple Line project, CDTA recruitment, and our electric car share program, Drive. Looking ahead, we'll launch our summer complement of services, including the Nature Bus, service to Grafton Lake State Park, and the Saratoga Trolley. Employees will participate in the Pride Parade on June 11th by walking in the parade, and one of our trolleys will be featured. On June 19th, the company will recognize the Juneteenth holiday. Any questions for Jamie? All right, our next meeting of the committee will be on Thursday, June 22nd at 1115 a.m. via Microsoft Teams and in person at 110 Watervliet Avenue. That concludes my report. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Dave. And uh, also uh, a big thank you to Jackie for being our first chairperson for the committee and for many years of service and doing an excellent job uh, with that. We certainly appreciate that, Jackie. We know your schedule is busy. So, uh, <laughs> thank you. Appreciate yep. that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And next up is uh, Strategic and Operational Planning Committee. And I want to Pat for stepping in at the last minute last week and sharing that on my behalf. And he's going to present the notes from that meeting. Thank uh, you, yes. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Uh, the committee met on May 25th at 12 o'clock at <clears throat> 110 and via Microsoft Teams. One administrative discussion item, and it was the transit quick takes operator work. Uh, Mr. Gary Guy presented it, and it's over the last several months, we had an extensive discussions about balancing the challenges involved with operator recruitment, retention, and attendance with meeting our service commitments to our customers. Many of these topics involve the inherent nature of work that operators must perform on a day-to-day -day basis. Gary Guy, Director of Transportation, facilitated a discussion around several of the considerations that go into creating operator schedules and assigning work. There are several categories of schedules, including working days, nights, splits, weekdays, partial weekends, and entire weekends. The ability to choose these schedules is based on seniority and the rules in the collective bargaining agreement. And RAs, I believe this is NYA, no run available schedules are more non-traditional pieces of work that cover runs left after senior operators make their choices. Extra list operators have no designated schedule for the duration of the pick and must sign up for work daily. This is due to changes in daily absenteeism, special events, training relief, etc. 
Hold down assignments also have no formal designated schedule, but will allow a person to sign up for work on a weekly or a monthly basis. Vacation floaters work the weeks that other operators take off as vacations. Balancing these considerations coupled with operator shortages is complex. What one employee may consider good, another may consider bad. With quality, experienced staff and supervision, we can minimize the negative impacts on our employees and our customers. Great presentation. Any questions for, for Gary? <clears throat> hey, one thing, thanks for everybody's interest in this subject. You know, we really want to start to highlight this. So we're asking you to make decisions that revolve around this to maybe a better core understanding. So we're, we're, we haven't figured out yet what this is going to be, but we think it's going to be a series of presentations that really focus on this work because it would make Pat's last comment is the most important. What one person considers good work, the other person considers bad work. And what we're trying to do is just kind of level that out, distribute this a little bit more equitably if, if that is doable. You know, lots of rules and regulations in this industry. It's not just CDTA. It's everywhere. Um, but we have a lot of work to cover if you think about it. It's 18 hours a day, seven days a week. So it's a challenge. But I think, you know, Gary did a great job and he may be back with some more, some more information. Very good. Any other questions? Okay, everybody's good. The next meeting of this committee will be June 22nd, uh, 2023 at 12 p.m. at 110 Waterloo Avenue and via Microsoft Teams. Thank you. Thanks, Pat. Thanks for the presentation. Yes, Carm. Yes, CEO's thanks. Report. Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah. It's in your packet. Um, I bristled at the mention of fires and... Um, you know, look today because I, Denise, you might have been here, I'm not sure, but we lived through a, a, a time when there were fires on, on our buses. And, uh, we, know, we know what the cause was, but it wasn't a pleasant time to be working here, and it was, it was tough. Uh, and a lot of attention on us, uh, both media and our friends at State DOT, who were not very happy with us. They were not happy with our maintenance uh, program. They weren't happy with our management oversight. Uh, but we got through that, and we made lots of improvements. Um, one of the other areas, though, that we've made a lot of improvements on is this whole outward-facing um, um, push on the part of the organization. And, and, and Dave, actually, uh, when he offered me this job, one of the first things we talked about was we needed to be more active um, in the community and at the planning tables. We needed to be part of the economic development uh, discussion. We were perceived as nice people. I think we were perceived by the development community as professional uh, 15 or 17 years ago. But we weren't, we weren't on, in their Rolodex, that's for sure. Uh, and that really has changed. And I can talk about that a little bit in, in my report. Um, we now get called regularly. We're now part of a bigger discussion. Uh, we're now part of lots of people's agendas. Um, and I think they know what we do and we matter. And that's really been the uh, biggest change that I've seen. Uh, it takes a lot of work. There's a lot of work that happens all the time, but we're constantly showing the CDTA flag. Um, you know, my way of managing is not everyone's cup of tea. My least favorite word in the English language is no. Uh, no cuts off uh, all communication. So oftentimes we'll, we'll nod or say yes, sometimes with our fingers crossed behind our backs because we know it might be difficult for us to accomplish, but at least we can go to the meeting and listen. <coughs> uh, listen, um, take note, and then maybe find a different way to solve a problem. But we're surrounded now by problem solvers, and, and that's what I'm most proud of. You know, people here really uh, are willing to solve problems, and whether it be, uh, I didn't know that it was a million-dollar client uh, that didn't even enter into our process when we you know came to the rescue I guess but you know, just talking to my two friends out the door and they said it's plus a million dollars you know what that means one of their bigger clients so I'm glad we can make them happy but really that's what's changed uh, here at CDT. Um, lots of construction activities detailed in the report but I, I mean 
to know that the garden way is going to open um, soon is really a step in the right direction because it's going to be really our first you know, exclusive lane right away. And even the Harriman campus will have uh, almost uh, a garden way. We're, st we're still working on that. It might be good news to follow along. <coughs> um, the mobility hub, the gateway mobility hub um, is moving along. I was here the other day. Uh, that will be ready to open uh, mid, mid late summer. We've talked about that for many, many years. That we needed to, to be more active in the development of these places where people could gather uh, and use our family of services. Well, 15 years ago, there wasn't a family of services. Now there is, and it, it makes it uh, all the more uh, uh, enjoyable to see that. And that'll be a model for what we want to do around the region. Um, I got to tell you, I was really proud to be in the room uh, last month when the Warren <coughs> County Board of Supervisors voted um, to join the authority. It's been an interesting road, that I'll say that. Um, thanks to my mole in disguise, people all he kept me kind of updated on how to navigate because they are a different group of people. Um, they're not like, certainly not like the Montgomery Board of Supervisors, and they're certainly not like the legislatures that we deal with in Albany, um, Schenectady. If I could throw right back to you, in my mall status, I heard that, uh, I think that's a little strange. I'm not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody has a mall. Um, I was told that, that the person who, who told me that in the past said it was the first time the court had voted unanimously on something in a mall. So, that's a good one. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah. Great. And they said he was great. Um, and a, a quick update on the enabling legislation. Um, you know that we had to modify, uh, had to have our enabling legislation modified to specifically name Warren County. I argued tooth and nail that that wasn't necessary, but anyway, it was necessary. It is moving through both the Assembly and Senate today. Uh, it might be voted on positive, hopefully positively today or tomorrow. Uh, we're running out of time because they're getting out, they're getting out of Dodge, literally. Week, so uh, hopefully that, that that gets done. Uh, thanks everybody for joining us at the uh, Desmond uh, last month, last week, two weeks ago, uh, for our annual awards dinner. Great job by uh, our staff, um, and you know showing up in Roaring Twenties uh, regalia as well. Um, uh, over the top event, uh, really happy with that. Uh, we've begun the collective bargaining process with, with the Amalgamated Transit Union, uh, Local 1321. We've had several meetings. Uh, we're probably going to have several more. Uh, this will probably you know, stretch into the summer. Contract expires on the 14th, 12th, 12th of June. Um, not uncommon you know, for, for this to move past the, um, past the uh, contract date, but uh, everybody's having loads of fun. Uh, in those negotiating sessions. They all come back smiling. Can't wait to get back to the next one. Both sides. Both sides. Uh, if nothing else, they're getting closer as people and we'll be uh, friends for life. Um, while we do that, um, you know, I, I didn't want to lose sight of the core measurement. Uh, ridership, you know, that's my favorite subject, right? April was 1.27 million, 17% higher than last April. I was worried that once we started comparing the apple to the apple, the good year, you know, last year was a great year, you know, come to a new year, I said, ah, oh, we're just going to probably level out. We haven't. Uh, and I've, the early results in May don't show us leveling out. So had a great discussion at, at, uh, at the Operational Planning Committee about the nature of that ridership, and it's changing somewhat, and it's much more spread out, but regardless, it, it continues to go up. And then lastly, um, I also had the good fortune, and those of you who know him will chuckle, uh, I, I did a 30-minute blog post with, uh, with Doug Eady, and we <clears> talked <throat> about uh, governance here at CDT. Doug Eady is a consultant who, whose model for governance we have adopt, adopted you know, almost 20 years ago, uh, and we've maintained that model. And it's unique. It's, it's a little different. Um, but he wanted me to talk about the biggest change I've seen in the last five years, and the, the biggest change in the last five years is the Community and Stakeholder Engagement Committee. Uh, it puts a focus on all this work that we talk about all the time. And we struggled for a long time. Uh, lots of stops and starts. But if you remember, we buried it in the planning committee and said, well, it can live in planning. 
uh, code, we weren't really ready to say that this was a full-time job uh, as, as board, in board governance. Uh, but once we put it um, on its own, uh, and, and Mike, you're right, thanks to Jackie, she was uh, you know, the first chair. Uh, and now back, in, and back with Dave Sacro, I'm convinced it will, it will continue to grow. But that is a big change when we decided as, 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 as the board to focus on this and make it important. I think um, you know, once you focus on something like that, it's going to get better. And it certainly is um, lots of work by everybody around the table to, to make all these things happen. None of them happen by accident. Um, you know, I get the phone call, but everybody else does work. And taking a phone call is relatively easy. Well, I wonder sometimes. Some people don't take phone calls. A phone call or an email is relatively easy. But uh, thanks for you know, the board's work. That concludes my report. All right. Thanks, Carl. Thanks for the updates and everything. Uh, it's good to see where ridership sucks, and yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic. And services expanding, and it's all positive uh, news. Great to be a part of. So thank you. <coughs> um, are there any other board member comments? Just a yes, question yeah. on the. Uh, Montgomery County and Warren County. They reached out about representation on the board. <laughs> Is that, um, Montgomery County has not. Warren County, oh yeah, they're all over it. So when the Warren, I think when Warren County happens, Montgomery will. Difficulty is enabling legislation is silent on this subject. Um, so uh, already have Lisa Morello prepped. I think we're going to have to work on another modification to the enabling legislation. For example, is it one or two? Um, and I can't answer that because it's silent. The enabling legislation was set up to start the authority, really not to continue it. Um, we bump into this occasionally. This is one where, yeah. Warren County is, although they're, they're, they've got a list of people. Uh, can't wait to come down. Um, very little <laughs> Montgomery County. So I haven't stirred the pot. But we should have local representation. Uh, I figured let's get two at once, uh, one at a time. Right. By the way, I was looking at numbers. We are going to be just shy of a million people in our service area. You know, for years and years, you know, our stats said you know the service we cover uh, about eight hundred and fifty thousand. I went back and I threw in the new counties. It'll get us close to a million. We might have to round that up. Especially with the growth in the city of Albany, I was reading about that. All right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So not. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yeah. I didn't know we were counting that exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Any other comments? Um, all right. So our, our next board meeting will be Wednesday, June 28th, 12 p.m. here at 110 Water Fleet Ave or via Microsoft Teams and uh, seek a motion to adjourn the meeting. And Peter, second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All right. Meetings adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody.